in the hidden parts of society, a few people have become famous for being very clever and daring criminals. Today, we are going to explore the stories of these mysterious individuals who chose to live dangerously close to breaking the law. Starting with the 10th most dangerous criminal, Jean-Bernard Lasneau, hailing from France, serves as a reminder that sometimes the most significant criminals can operate right under our noses. With origins in France, Jean-Bernard Lasneau became a wanted man across various European nations during the 1980s and 1990s. His illicit arms trading activities violated multiple international trade embargoes, resulting in his fugitive status. Taking evasive measures, he sought refuge in the United States, specifically Florida, where he boldly continued his illegal operations from the lavish comfort of his extravagant condominium. Adding to his audacity, he even established a publicly accessible website that allowed individuals with sufficient funds and the required documentation to purchase items ranging from fighter jets to machine guns. As his wealth accumulated, so did his ability to elude capture. However, the narrative took a twist in 2002 when he suddenly vanished, only to reappear on the radar upon his arrest in Switzerland that same year. Number 9. Leonid Minin was originally born in Ukraine. He gained notoriety in the criminal world as an international arms dealer, selling dangerous weapons to dangerous people. Some of his best-known clients included Charles Taylor, the controversial ex-president of Liberia, and various rebel groups in West Africa. While his business fueled conflicts, Manon himself indulged in drugs, alcohol, and the company of prostitutes. He was found in possession of these vices, along with about half a million dollars worth of blood diamonds, when he was arrested in Italy in 2000. Number 8. Charles Ponzi, the name synonymous with financial fraud, demonstrated that you don't always need a weapon to blindside people financially. His arrest marked the culmination of his elaborate deception. Posing as a legitimate entrepreneur, Ponzi orchestrated an intricate swindle that duped countless investors. The mechanics were seemingly ingenious. He capitalized on international postal reply coupons, converting them into US postage stamps for resale and profit. Yet the adage holds true. If it sounds too good to be true, it likely is. Behind the smoke and mirrors, only Ponzi emerged prosperous, siphoning off the majority of the funds. As a pioneer in the realm of white-collar crime, his legacy persists through the term Ponzi scheme. In a landscape where the odds are stacked against the many, it's ultimately a game where everyone else loses. Number 7. Amado Carrillo Fuentes, also known as the Lord of the Skies, was a powerful figure for some time. He led Mexico's Juarez cartel and became its leader by getting rid of the previous boss, Rafael Aguilar Guajardo. He was nicknamed Lord of the Skies because he had many airplanes to transport cocaine around the world. He was also one of the richest criminals in history, with an estimated net worth of over 25 billion US dollars. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1997 due to complications from plastic surgery, which he had to hide from the authorities. Number 6. James Whitey Bulger, a predator in every sense, required exceptional intelligence to successfully evade authorities for so long in his hometown of South Boston. He rapidly gained notoriety as a young troublemaker, known for both stealing and engaging in physical altercations. His moniker Whitey stemmed from his distinctive light blonde hair as bestowed by the local police. Bulger's ascent in the criminal world led him to take the reins of the Winter Hill Gang in Boston orchestrating a range of illegal activities from extortion to the arms trade. The bottom line was clear. Bulger needed to be apprehended sooner rather than later. His escapades persisted until 1994 when he went into hiding, eventually being captured in 2011 at the age of 81. Number 5. Jesse James, one of the most famous names from the American Old West, was also a well-known train robber. He and his crew, known as the James Younger Gang, were not afraid to kill anyone who got in their way. They managed to steal around $200,000, which is approximately equal to $4,667,038.17 today during their criminal careers. Surprisingly, they were respected in their home state of Missouri because they supported the Confederacy during the American Civil War. Jesse James became an iconic hero, but his fate was sealed when he was shot in the back by a member of his own gang, Robert Ford, the village was too small for them both. Number 4. John Dillinger, yet another wrongdoer basking in favorable publicity, emerged as a bank robber during the Great Depression. 
his unlawful exploits were accompanied by his fondness for the limelight. Dillinger had a particular knack for robbing banks, and he was quite fond of casting himself as a modern-day Robin Hood. His favorite pursuit was pilfering from prosperous banks and redistributing the loot to the common people. This portrayal of him as a savior is still subject to debate today. Nevertheless, Dillinger was cast as a sort of folk hero, an image that gained momentum due to his audacious jailbreaks. In a twist of fate, he was fatally shot outside a movie theater in 1934. Remarkably, a notable number of individuals seem to mourn the passing of this so-called public enemy number one. Number three, Mickey Cohen, whose real name was Maya Harris, showed that Hollywood-style stunts don't need a movie role. He became one of the most famous mob bosses in Los Angeles. Starting as a tough guy who worked for the Mafia during Prohibition, Cohen climbed the ladder until he was at the top. He was known for dressing well and for being good at promoting himself. He knew how to make the media think positively about even the bad things he did. Even though he did many bad things, he was only arrested for not paying his taxes. Mr. Cohen, you're under arrest for not paying your federal income tax, they said. Number two, Pablo Escobar, once the chief distributor of another addictive substance in Colombia, assumed numerous roles within the Medellin cartel. These roles included those of a drug lord and a terrorist. Under the alias Yo Soy Pablo, his multifaceted identity was marked by an undeniable impact. Escobar's expansive drug empire not only positioned him as a dominant figure in his homeland, but also propelled him to immense wealth, earning him a spot among the world's richest individuals, as recognized by Forbes magazine. His unrelenting pragmatism allowed him to safeguard his fortune. Employing ruthless methods, he was prepared to bribe, eliminate, or even orchestrate bombings to eliminate any obstacles in his path. This violent trajectory reached its culmination in 1993 when Escobar met his demise during a rooftop pursuit. Prior to revealing our top selection, let's acknowledge a few honorable mentions. Number one, Al Capone, the individual responsible for injecting order into organized crime, capitalized on the prohibition era. He recognized the lucrative potential of the then illegal liquor trade as in court if you didn't have a bookkeeper, you had nothing. Capitalizing on this, Capone amassed significant wealth from this venture. His aggressive tactics to expand his bootlegging enterprise nationwide, such as the infamous St. Valentine's Day Massacre, were largely unopposed. This was unsurprising, considering people's unwavering affinity for alcohol. Capone not only embraced notoriety, but also engaged in philanthropic gestures, donating ill-gotten gains to charity. Ironically, he failed to allocate any portion of his wealth to the federal government, an oversight that led to his conviction for tax evasion in 1932. If you like this video and would like to see more, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.